Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Philosophy Weekly. This week, Guillermo Amaral joins me for a South of the Border show about something very important, how to notify your friends when you think you might be in trouble. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Guillermo Amaral. Episode 385, recorded April 26th, 2016. Buoy. This episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by DigitalOcean, simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit DigitalOcean.com, and once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code FLOSS in the billing section to get your $10 credit. And by IT Pro TV. IT Pro TV is an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. For a free seven-day trial and 30% off the life of your account, go to itpro.tv slash floss and use the code FLOSS30. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, bringing you each week or as often as I can, the movers, the shakers, the big projects, the little projects, projects you may be using every day and not aware of it, projects you may want to go find out about right after this show. But uh, if you're driving in a car, don't don't look at it right away. you got to go home first, okay? Uh, very important that way. Uh, joining me again, once again, welcome back to the show, Guillermo Amaral. Welcome back. Hey, man. How's it going? It's going okay, and I'm waving in your general direction as, uh, as we occasionally do. This is a all south of the border show, so I am in a, an apartment in Tijuana that my friend uh, rents, uh, and used to have a girlfriend here, but she took the microwave. That's really annoying. So now I can't even have caffeine in the morning, which is really, really bad. Um, and Guillermo is uh, just up the road uh, near the Playa, and um, we're doing a south of the border show today. So what is today's show? Today's show is about buoy or boy, depending on what part of the country you're from. Okay, so uh, and. It seems to be, uh, I, I, we're going to bring on uh, the, the co-founders of the project in just a few minutes. That would be uh, Meme and uh, Rebecca. So we'll bring them on in a second to actually describe what it's about instead of us making it all up. But um, it, I guess it started out because uh, people wanted to feel, uh, wanted to have some degree of safety and don't always trust that the government's going to be doing all that. And we'll probably get some political stuff in here as well. I, I figured something like that. But it's, it's, it's still a project in its early infancy. So uh, it's actually part of a family of projects uh, all about um, uh, people sort of being um, more active in their community and uh, and that's yeah. You know, now we'll see how good the elevator pitch actually was. I probably had, totally messed it up. But uh, uh, Guillermo, what did you take away from looking at the website late last well, night? It, it does. <laughs> it does kind of look like a, uh, I guess, an SOS type system. So, or, or uh, what was what was that thing they used to sell in the eighties or nineties? The uh, life alert was it? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, but on a on a mobile. So I guess uh, instead of calling some uh, you know call center, it would it would uh, technically just call your friends. Uh, but that is as far as I got because I was super sleepy last night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, still jet lagged, so well, I guess we yeah. both are. So yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm boat leg. I was on a boat for the last couple of weeks, and and, and I had to walk across to, uh, from the U.S. to uh, Mexico last yesterday afternoon, and that just wore me all out. Well, anyway, instead of us continuing to make up what we think this is about, we'll go ahead and bring our guests on in just a minute. But before that, I have an important message because. Whether you're developing an app, a website, or working on a server-based project, you need flexible, reliable, and affordable hosting. DigitalOcean offers droplets, which are virtual private servers that can be customized and deployed easily to host websites, web apps, production apps, personal projects, virtual desktops, and almost anything else you can think of with full root access, unlike a lot of the hosting situations. This helps you get your project off the ground quickly and makes it easy to scale when you find success. DigitalOcean is used by over 600,000 developers, including me. I first learned about DigitalOcean uh, last year at scale, and I've had a, a box running ever since then. I use it to build my FreeBSD packages and things. Uh, deploy and configure your droplets via streamlined control panel or simple API. And you can choose your OS, Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, CoreOS, and FreeBSD. That's my choice for those. Uh, select from one of the many pre-configured one-clicks like Drupal, Docker, or Node.js to get up and running quickly or build the exact infrastructure you need with root access to servers running 100% SSDs really fast in the state-of-the-art data centers around the world. It's highly scalable to meet the demands of a rapidly growing application or business. And you can also use advanced features like floating IPs for high availability, private networking, or automated deployments via the API. It's an extremely active community as well with a large 
large and detailed set of tutorials on all the ways you can use your droplet. You want to configure a LAMP server? Set up a virtual desktop or VPN? They have you covered. And it's so easy to get started. You can deploy an SSD cloud server in as little as 55 seconds. DigitalOcean has incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing. Servers start at only $5 a month. There's also hourly pricing available starting at less than a penny per hour. But we're going to make it so you can get started today and deploy an SSE cloud server for free. Visit DigitalOcean.com and create an account. Once you confirm your email and account information, go to the billing section and enter the promo code FLOSS for a free $10 credit. That's plenty to get started and explore what DigitalOcean can do. That's DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, enter the code FLOSS, F-L-O-S-S, in the billing section to get your $10 credit for free. And we thank DigitalOcean for their support of Floss Weekly. And now let's go ahead and bring on our guest, uh, Mamie. Welcome to the show. Hi, Randall. Thanks so much for having me. Super excited very to be cool, here. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, and, and uh, also, Rebecca, welcome to the show as well. Hi. Nice to be here. And where are you? I, I think you're both in the same city, but uh, where are you speaking to us from? Yeah, sunny and dry uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And can you spell Albuquerque for us? Oh, I, I couldn't if I tried, but... Uh, <laughs> There's a Dark Q and some U's and... Yeah, okay. It's a tough one. Just, I don't actually... Yeah, I don't live here um, uh, myself, but I've been here for a couple months now, and it's it's quite a nice city, actually. Yes, yes, the the, the city that uh, uh, Breaking Bad made famous. That's right. Yes, big That's TV true. industry here. Okay, well, enough to chat. Let's 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 let's, let's, let's get, uh, Mamie. I'll start with you. The, the the thirty thousand foot view. What is this about, and how close did I get? Yeah. Um. So it's it's it can be a difficult thing to talk about because there's actually quite a few levels of it. Um. We like to say that Buoy is basically an app that uh, helps you. Uh, tell your friends where you are and what you need. And of course, there's a lot of different um, different layers to that, right? Depending on who you are and what you need. Um, mm -hmm. So so um, so it, it's kind of sort of started by well, the context of this is that about two and a half years or so ago, I was um, I was in Portland, Oregon, and I was taking a training, a street medic training, um, from an amazing group called the Rosehip Medic Collective, um, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, I, I lived in San Francisco for a while as, as, as a developer, and I kind of wanted a life change. And I left San Francisco um, to just hitchhike around the country. Ended up in uh, Portland, Oregon, um, and taking you know meeting these amazing people and taking this training. And one of the things that I noticed um, there was that in order to coordinate where we're going to be and 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 how uh, how we're going to respond to in this case medical uh, community medical emergencies you know all we really had were text messages and so we had this system of uh, you know if you didn't really know where you were in the city as I didn't because I was traveling um, mm -hmm. it was very difficult to um, to to know where to go and 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 what you needed to like what you needed to bring there because we had this sort of flat chat room like interface where our world was really you know about where things are and where our resources are in, in, in physical space. So we didn't have tools that were very useful for that. Um, and also, you know, as I was hitchhiking, this was sort of the age of Google Latitude, if you remember that. And oh, yeah. I felt a lot safer when I was um, hitchhiking or just, you know, traveling around, letting my friends know where I was any time. Um, I like the way Google Latitude allowed you to, set, to share city location or spe specific locations. Um, and then, you know, Google famously shut down Latitude. And so I, I wanted I wanted to have something that's there's sort of like technological backup for that um, for that feeling to to, to show to, to to have my friends be able to to find me in case I was in trouble. Um, so this mm -hmm. has sort of like been rolling around in our head for 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 a while. And then um, you know I talked to Rebecca about this and we started to 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 think it through. Um, uh, some UX diagrams and some, uh, so how how this might actually work with developing technology and smartphones um, that were not quite at the same point in 2008, 2010, you know, as they are now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, and then with uh, Rebecca's um, background in domestic violence survivor support, which I'm sure she'll talk a little bit about, um, we sort of realized that this could actually be useful in a lot of other situations as well, um, beyond simply just the individual case of I want to know, um, you know, how I want to tell my friends. Uh, exactly where I am and, and what I might need in situation. So that's sort of where it started, and it's an interesting journey because um, it isn't. It didn't really. It's kind of. It's kind of gone into a place where um, it, it didn't start out where it's going, um, and so that's that's been. It's, it's interesting. Does that does that give you a? a yeah, yeah, I understand it idea? a lot better. It's like it's like if, if anybody wants to know where I'm at, I just I, you know you watch my. Um, Four square check-ins because I check in everywhere. I'm I'm, I'm right. all for meet, meaningless points. I always love meaningless points. So I right. love being the mayor of places. That I, <laughs> well, and I've so that's only a good point. Twice. I, I think I think the important thing. Oh, is it okay if I jump in here? I, I think yeah, a really important thing that um, that May didn't mention in this in this story is that um, 
the thing that that we have kind of built Bowie to do that's unique from these kind of one to one like I could look at your four square check-ins and see where you are, or I could text a friend and tell them, you know, I'm going downtown and let them know. Um, is that what Bowie does? Is it allows you to not just let an individual know what your status is, but to let a predefined kind of group, like a, a network of people, um, who you who like a, a response team essentially know what's okay. going on for you. And then gives those folks the facility to coordinate with each other. So mm. you're not just interacting with six individuals, but you're saying, hey, team, I need some help. Can you all talk to each other and figure out the best way to help me? Because I can't figure that out myself right now, and I need some backup. And that's that's really the, like May said, it's kind of gone in a direction that we didn't expect, but that's the most important thing I think that's come out of that mm -hmm. evolution. And does it give you a chance to say set up groups of people? One of the things I have is I'm, I, you know, I have Portland friends and I have uh, Santa Monica friends because I spend a lot of time in both of those places, and I even have Tijuana friends. Uh, hi, Guillermo. <laughs> uh, so I have people all around. And uh, is is Bowie designed so that I could say broadcast to a particular shared interest group? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so there's actually two levels of this, right? So there's the one, on the one hand, you have, um, I'm sure people are familiar with like the in case of emergency contact list on their phone. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is a little bit, um, on, on an individual level, you as one person can set up numerous lists like that. And then when you send an alert, you can either send it to, to a specific, uh, what we call a team or a group of people who you trust, um, mm -hmm. or you can send it to more than one at a time. But there's another layer, which is um, that because we want, you know, we're, big fans of free software. I've been using free software forever, love it, love working with it. And so really wanted to um, have a have the ability for communities to own this infrastructure themselves and be able to self-host it, install it, um, use it in their own networks that they may already have um, in as part of community organizations or like in the original case, the, the Street Medic Collective, for example. So there's already a group of people there with a shared interest. Um, and, you know, they're already sort of a tight-knit physical space community. And so they are they can, they can sort of have a buoy instance that is specific to coordinating for street medic issues for example um and so there's mm -hmm. that additional layer of it not just as an individual human like as an individual user you can have a um, one or more teams but also you can uh, have buoy be a special purpose instance of that thing that is sort of run by an organization of a small to medium size uh yeah, just a little uh, side question here uh, you mentioned that you can have groups and you can have people there that you can, you know, share your location with. How different would uh, this uh, uh, buoy be from, let's say, having a Facebook, a group where you share location, you send a message, I'm going downtown, which will also come with your uh, little location tag there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's actually um, w one of the things that I think is particularly special about Bowie in this case is that um, it gives you a live tracking map. So whereas, um, so when Google Latitude went away, for example, I sort of started to, and I was still hitchhiking and sort of riding around the country and doing my like non-developer thing, I um, I started to tweet out uh, geotagged uh, tweets of where I was so that people would know where I was was if I was if I was going to go to a, um, a place I'd never been before, a place that I felt a little you know not not. I, not not entirely comfortable in, um, but that was really sort of just a. It was just sort of like one. It 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 was it was sort of one moment in time, and it didn't keep up to date with where I was, which is one of the things I liked about Google Latitude. And so Booby does this as well. It gives you that sort of messaging interface that you would expect from, for example, Facebook Messenger. But right next to next to that, you also have a map where any where where, where your you know, like a pin that shows your location, as well as any of the responders who may have responded to an alert. Um, uh, will also show up and will move as you move in the world, um, and so there's that 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 gets a lot more. It, it it's a lot. It provides a lot more context for, um, for example, where I might be going instead of just I'm you know, right here at this instant in time, in an emergency or in uh, even just in like a you know nervous situation. Let's say you're walking home, you know, from work late at night. You want to be able to have your friends keep track of you at at all times, um, and so that's one thing that this does in addition to. That, that that I don't think you know Facebook Messenger can do quite yet. Oh, that's nice. So so you're you I guess you would be able just I guess setting this up you would be able to just turn on the uh, location tracking temporarily. Like okay, I'm, I know I'm going to a shady part of the city, let's say, and I can turn <laughs> it on, and uh, and uh, your friends who responded to that could see where you're going. But uh, you can't turn it off afterwards, I guess, because this would probably run your battery low very quickly. 
Yeah, one well, one of the things I'd like to do sort of on a technical level is improve the the performance for um you know getting um just working with the uh, the better the mobile battery API that that's in mobile browsers now. But but yes, the answer to your question is that is a thing you can do. In fact, um, this is another thing that sort of makes Bowie a little bit different is than than some of these sort of personal crisis response apps that are sort of coming out um, that you might be familiar with in this space. Um, we have taken some extreme care to follow uh, the National Network to End Domestic Violence's tech safety guidelines. And one of these is, um, you know, uh, you don't, oh, if, if you are a, a person who is in a vulnerable situation, for, for example, a domestic uh, violence survivor, then it's not always a safe idea to have your phone's location on all the time. And even if you're not, you know, that'll run down your battery. And so a lot of these personal safety apps sort of require that your location is on at all times. And we've made Buoy work so that it can track your location, like I just described, but it also has um, the ability to work completely without location. So in that case, you get basically just a messaging interface with a map of the other people on your response team um, so that you don't have to give up your location or show your location if that's not a safe thing for you to do. And this sort of comes back into like what what is safe and what is not really depends on your situation and the the, 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 the emergency that you find yourself in. Um, and we're trying to build Buoy so that it is... Uh, as as um, as broad for the generic case of I need to know where things are around me as possible. You know that you bring up a good point with the uh, security, especially if you have somebody who has gone through something uh, traumatic. Uh, it it would kind of be important to have you know just your location shared with uh, uh, as few people as possible, right? Uh, yes. So how how does the uh, uh, let's say the membership work, or how how do you authenticate who's uh, you know, seeing somebody else's location. Yeah, so that's another really good question that that um, has sort of two answers. Um, the first way to think about it is that uh, it, it's very similar in in style to like Facebook friending or even maybe Skype contacts where you can only communicate with somebody after you sort of mutually verified that you in fact want to communicate with that person. And there's two reasons for that. One of which was of course privacy, but the other of which is that it forces a conversation between those two people so that the responder, the person that you are inviting to join your team um, has to take some action to, to for you to be able to contact them so that they know that you're setting this up with them. And that's another point that, that was made in the, the, the tech safety guidelines um, is that a lot of apps sort of will make the assumption that, okay, you've added some people to your team um, or you, you know, you're sending an alert to these people, but dude, you don't actually take another step to make a human, uh, to take a human conversation um, and actually describe what you might need in that situation. So for Bowie, when you, when you get an account on some instance of Bowie, which again can be hosted by um, a local shelter or a street medic collective or a community group or even maybe just an apartment building that, you know, has set up this for their, their neighbors, um, then you will put in the email address or username of the person who you want to invite to your team and they'll get a notification um, via either email or, you know, whatever profile that they've set up, um, text message for instance, that, that you want uh, that you want them to be on your team, that you want to, you know, be able to reach out to them in the case of an emergency. And they'll have to come and confirm that, kind of like, you know, accept friend, basically. And then you can send alerts back and forth. Okay. So uh, let's say the uh, registration process, if I want to start using Bowie, uh, are, am I allowed to have more than one device? So I, I guess that would kind of be a security issue if I, let's say, have my cell phone with Bowie with, uh, let's say, my friends on there. And I also have yeah. a, a tablet that gets stolen, right? Um, is, is there a way to turn that off, or is it just limited to one? Something like WhatsApp, or uh, how 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 does it act, how does it actually work? Right. So this is another area where we've had to make some interesting architectural choices. I think that that may not be what what people might expect, and specifically, Bowie right now is a progressive web app only. So it, it's not actually a native app that you download off the app store. It's actually something that you, basically it's a bookmark that you can that you can add to your home screen if you want to or not. And again, this is um, part, partly this was made so that um, it, so that you don't have to install something on a device to use it. Um, because if you are in a situation where, for example, you don't have complete control over the, the hardware that you own, uh, then that could be dangerous. So instead, um, Bowie can be used from any browser uh, as long as you're connecting to a website that has Bowie enabled features. And so this is why we call Bowie um, sort of like a, a, it's a crisis response system that that is added to existing websites. And it's part of why 
it, one of the things that's so um, unique about this approach is that it relies on the existing networks, the existing social networks that people have or community groups that people might be a part of um, to be of to be of use. Okay, so um, if I understood correctly, you would uh, be able to log into Bui using like, let's say your Facebook uh, credentials? Uh, right now, it's just uh, that I, that would actually be a, something to add, to add, but right now it's it's a specific username and password sort of combination um, in the same way that you would log into you know a, a website of a forum or something like that. Okay, so you, and, and you are not logged out if you have more than one session. I know it's I I know I may be getting into the nitty gritty details here, but no, that's okay. I, I like the, the yeah. nitty gritty details. I mean, I don't usually <laughs> get to talk about the, them. Uh, oh, sorry, focusing on the uh, security aspect here. I'm I'm you know trying to dig into this a little. Uh, yeah, if if uh, let's say I open a, br uh, a browser session here, somebody opens one in uh, in another machine where I have my credentials saved there. You know, you can your browser can save your uh, username and password. Sometimes most people aren't really uh, you know um, uh, don't really have that in mind. Sometimes when you maybe leave your laptop in a ca cafe or something, right? Uh, mm -hmm. are, are, can both sessions be on at the same time? Right now, yes. Although uh, one of the so like. We are trying to make it so that it is both as easy to to, to access without needing, you know, with, without without the friction of having to log in. But also that what you've just described is actually a really good um, example of of one of the tensions of that. So you can log out other sessions, um, but this is that that's an area where we really want to do a lot more. Uh, we want to have a lot more conversations with the communities who are who are using it to to figure out how to handle that and what 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 what, what the balance for that really should be ultimately. Yeah, I, I I can totally understand that. You don't want to uh, that could be a little restrictive for a lot of people, especially if you are, you know, not used to that strict level of security, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you if you want to, uh, I guess an idea from me, I would probably just uh, add a little notification in the chat when somebody logs in twice, right? Yes. I could probably just let them know, okay, something's going and let me just uh, turn off this uh, session over here. Um, yeah, so uh, so how you, you mentioned it's uh, web browser based. So I'm guessing you also have an API exposed. Is it ajax -y? Can I uh, connect to it from, a, from a, I don't know, some uh, Ajax client or something? <laughs> Not yet, although that is something that we want to we want to add. Right now, we're building on top of the WordPress uh, REST API, actually. So, so this whole thing is packaged as as a WordPress plugin, um, which is another question I get a lot. You know, like why why did you make a WordPress plugin? Um, and part of this is to make it as easy as possible for these small community groups that I've talked about um, to deploy and use today, basically. So, so we get we get the benefit of of the WordPress um, REST API. Uh, because all of the features that I've talked about are basically implemented by overloading core WordPress features. No, I can see I, I can see a lot of people have WordPress, and I used to have that myself for a while. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can I can totally see the uh, the uh, the gains you get in, in just making it a lot easier for people to start a WordPress blog and you know have details there for let's say a group of uh, hackers or whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or, yeah. or in this case, makers, if you want to, uh, you know, get <laughs> right. a little detail of what I'm thinking about. And uh, yeah, you can just have that there and everybody can see where everybody else is, I guess. So it, it does make a lot of sense. Uh, so you are planning in, in on uh, later on adding a, uh, a uh, let's say, more Web 2.0 uh, API then? Yeah, so uh, the the... The REST API gives us a lot of the core stuff out of the box, but we want to be able to, for example, add ad additional notification adapters so that it's not just, for example, email and text messages, but also you could send, for instance, like a Twitter DM, which is another way that we're trying to meet people where they're at and use the tools that these communities are already are already using um, for you know their their own purposes and 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 sort of add this additional aug like technological augmentation on top of any uh, existing crisis response plans that they might that they might have um, and for that we want an API to work with as many different services as possible it's another reason why we went with um, a web-based model because that gives us a lot more uh, it gives it, it opens up a lot more doors a lot quicker yeah that, okay I see you beat me to the punch I was gonna work my way through there uh, <laughs> yeah so yeah because I, I, I can see I can see somebody using something like uh, Twitter to send a DM and that DM going directly to the group. Uh, in mm -hmm. case you use like a special tag or something, right? Because something you may not be able to open your browser in that certain moment. You would just may have, or, or Twitter might be easier for you. Let's say. Uh, right. The other thing that's Twitter that will Twitter currently get lets us do um, 
uh, with an actual SMS input so you can send, um, you don't have to have a smartphone to use it, um, which is another consideration that we've sort of put a lot of work into is trying to make sure that this is um, as, as easily usable by people who may not have the kind of uh, access to hardware resources as, as we as developers might expect or <laughs> be, be familiar with having. Yeah, of course. And uh, so I'm guessing this is real time and you are, lo you are loading everything from the uh, web page, uh, streaming, I guess, all the information. So if somebody sends a message, you will see it real time on your phone or tablet, right? Uh, uh, is there any uh, any recovery uh, situation there? Because I'm guessing most people will probably walk, uh, find their way into a, an area without a good LTE or, or even edge. Uh, so is, is there a way for it to reconnect quickly and, you know, update the, uh, the location where you were last seen or something? Yeah. Um, most of the, of the, of the tracking logic is, is client side. And, and so that means basically it's, it's, it's a JavaScript service worker that's, that, that, that's running. Um, and so as long as you've got your browser open, it will sort of ping, um, the device on which you are running it and ask, you know, do I have a connection now? Do I have a connection now? Do I have a connection now? Um, and so that there's that. That said, um, I actually recently watched the Floss Weekly show uh, about PouchDB um, and a lot of uh, and hoodie um, and the offline first functionality that they're that they're developing. And so that's something that I want to look much more closely at to see if we can get some some better offline features um, built in. But we don't have that yet. Okay, and, and uh, maybe you can you can uh, I, I guess that, are you guys planning something else? Let's say like a wearable. Uh, version of this, uh, maybe you know, with the uh, whole Internet of Things thing, uh, maybe you can have like a little button, you know, to send like emergency messages. <laughs> but I guess you would probably need like a, uh, I guess a uh, different API for that. Yeah, um, I don't. I mean, that hasn't that hasn't come up. Um, Internet of Things has come up in terms of what we can do in the, in the case of emergency, for example, you might have um, a camera on your porch that you might want to turn on um, in case of an emergency. And so that would be an interesting um, integration. But we haven't thought about wearables. I, have, have you gotten any feedback about that, Rebecca? Not so far. No, yeah. That hasn't, that hasn't been a thing that we... That, that uh, how big is your uh, user base right now? I'm, I'm guessing, uh, uh, are you still in beta or is this project already uh, full-blown working there and everybody's, uh, you know, you have a lot of, a large user base? Um, our, our users at, uh, at the current time are, we're, we're very much like Randall said, still in the, in the sort of nascent developmental stage of this. So what we have been communicating with the people that we work with, and we work with a lot of community groups, um, a really important part of our development process is to just actually sit down in person in real time with the people who this app is intended for and kind of work together with them around how to customize and build it for what they need. Um, and so most of the communication that we've had with them around it is that um, the app is usable and ready to go, or the tool is usable and ready to go for the organizations to kind of test out and use in their own cases, um, but that it's not something that we would ask anybody to rely on in an actual acute emergency situation at this point. Um, so that's, that's sort of where we're at in our testing and development and user collaboration stage yeah, of things. Um, I, I'm, I'm calling it a, a very functional prototype because <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's sort of, we just released V0.2 um, just a couple days ago. Uh, and, and it's going to take a while before I feel comfortable calling this anywhere close to 1.0. Oh, that's, that's, I guess that is the uh, developer's dilemma, right? Because they never feel anything's ready for, you know, to actually be <laughs> right. sent out well, there. Yeah, and I, th I think that, we feel is... like... Oh, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I think that we feel like, especially because, you know, we have big goals with this tool. And so especially because this is something that we would like people to feel like they can rely on in, um, in a real crisis situation, we want to make sure that it's reliable and tested and working as well as it possibly can be before we ask people to put uh, their, their trust in it to that level. Right. And, and the other thing to note is that a lot of times um, people are sort of uh, have, have a reflex of, of calling, um, uh, you know, making a 911 call or something because it's, it's the thing that is most accessible, but it's not necessarily the thing that's best for the situation they're in, in part because maybe the situation they're in doesn't really rise to the level of a 911 emergency or maybe they don't want people, they don't know to be involved in 
uh, the crisis that they're they're having. It could be uh, a mental health breakdown or or you know suicidal feelings or or anything like that. That those are things that I I would say that's happened, you know that that we that you could use but before now, um, but. You know, if you're like, you know, in a burning building, I would say definitely also call the fire department. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, uh, I, I, I still have some more questions here. And I know Guillermo's got a few more as well. But IT changes daily and a good IT pro is constantly learning and staying up to date with current technology certifications. IT Pro TV's high quality video tutorials will not only keep your IT skills current, but they will bring you closer to achieving that new IT job you've already been working towards. They've got a thousand hours of content and new courses are added weekly. You can stream their courses live and on demand worldwide to your Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire. TV, Apple TV, or PC, plus learn on the go with your mobile device. Course topics include PFSense, Citrus uh, Zen Server, CCNP Security, A+, AWS, Ethical Hacking, CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner, and Microsoft Server 2016 MCSE, and more. Over 100 step-by-step -step virtual machine labs and Transcender practice exams. That's a $109 value. One low monthly subscription price. No hassle cancellation policy. Transcripts that you follow from start to finish or jump right to any part of the video. There's a corporate pricing available as well. Clients include Harvard, MIT, UCSD, Stanford, and more. So check out itpro.tv slash floss to upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certifications. Premium subscriptions are normally $57 a month or $570 per year, but we have a special offer. Try it free for seven days when you sign up using our code FLOSS30 to check out their courses, live stream, and more. You'll also receive 30% off the lifetime of your account. That's less than $40 per month or $399 for the entire year. Again, just visit itpro.tv slash F-L-O-S-S and use the code FLOSS30 and try it free for seven days. Plus save 30% off the life of your account. So I have a question because I don't know anything about WordPress. So you uh, mm -hmm. go gently on me here. Uh, is, this, is that written in PHP? It is, yes. So most of the coding you've done so far, it's, it's all PHP. Yeah, it's PHP and JavaScript basically. Okay, cool, cool. And and so this could be hosted on, uh, are there central hosting sites for WordPress? So one of the reasons I actually went with WordPress is because I don't know of a single host that doesn't support it. Um, and again, we really wanted to make this available to the people who uh, would, you know, who, who, were, who we want to make it useful for as, as easily as possible. And so WordPress is kind of like, runs basically everywhere it's one of the first things that that you know you you'll see on on a on a host you know one click install list um, mm -hmm. and also and that's one of the reasons why so many of these groups already have wordpress sites um so that was part of the reason why we sort of began to package it um as, as a wordpress plugin so if you're familiar with you know clicking the you know adding a plugin to wordpress you can install buoy Oh, cool, cool. And uh, how is this project organized? I mean, I'm not, you're obviously working on it, and and, uh, and Rebecca's working on it, but how many other people do you have involved right now? Um, so we have kind of a a pretty small core team. The, so the entire project is 100% volunteer, um, which means mm -hmm. that there's, there's a, a small number of people who have a significant amount of time to devote to it, and that includes May, myself, um, our... Uh, awesome social media manager and uh, who and and a handful of other people who have sort of contributed various things over time or who are working with us contributing on a more regular basis um, and then and then we have like I said a number of community groups we work with um, we have sort of partnerships with various various different organizations um, as may mentioned earlier part of how part of how this uh, started getting built is we had had the idea for a little while and um, we kind of been thinking through it and wireframing it and then um, and then an organization called tech for justice that uh, that supports domestic violence survivors had a hackathon to get people together to work on technology specifically for coming up with um, solutions for supporting people in those situations. And that was where um, the first lines of code for Bowie were written. And that organization we've continued to work with um, and some community groups here in Albuquerque and community groups sort of based there uh, where they are in Houston. So it's a little bit of a a patchwork quilt of kind of different people with different interests who are contributing in different ways. And, um, and we're definitely always looking to, to expand that, that community reach and, um, connect with more people who, who want to help, who want to help build the tool out 
to be something that would be customizable and specifically helpful for their use case. So make that, let's continue and make it a call for action. So what kind of people are you most desperately missing right now? Um, well, one thing that we would love to have is a designer. Um, May has been really fantastic on the back end stuff um, and also does some of the front end stuff, but I think it's not necessarily his bailiwick. Um, and we, you know, we can definitely use, we can always use both technical and non-technical contributors. If you go and check out our website, which um, is in the, the lower third here, we have a whole page just sort of talking about different kinds of contributions that are valuable to us. So everything from contributing code to um, to human language translations. Um, if somebody wants to to uh, draw us a logo, we that, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, um, and uh, so am I accurate? Is, is, is Better Angels a sort of a more umbrella organization? And, and what other projects do you envision putting under that umbrella? Yeah. Uh, so, do you want do you want to take that? Should I? Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. So um, the way I, I've been thinking about it is, is Better Angels is basically just a name of all the the the, the varied groups of folks who have. Um, you know, who sort of have heard of this idea and are like, yes, that would be something that I'd like to be a part of or I'd like to use. Um, and so it's uh, it's really just a name for a collective of groups that don't have a particular, um, you know, that they, they don't have any kind of legal structure or anything. Buoy is the name of the project. And so if you click on the, you know, the Buoy link on the Better Angels website, you'll go to the project website. Um, and then Buoy itself is sort of one piece of what we hope to, to build out um, with a larger vision to move from not just crisis response on in this individual sense, but um, like Guillermo was um, was saying, uh, sort of like for a, for for a group itself, and then maybe for groups of groups. Um, but that's that's sort of that's that's a little bit down down the line. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, how about localization? Have you got uh, internationalization, localization on the roadmap? Yeah, that's already all in there. So um, we could really use some more translators to to you know who speak languages um, other than English and Spanish. Um, right now, it is fully English and Spanish localized. Um, but we have I think fifty percent done in French and that thirty percent done in German. So we have a few people working on those translations. But but more languages the better. I was um, emailing with someone in Barcelona the other day who was using uh, Buoy to train union organizers uh, how to use WordPress and and then use Buoy as an example plugin um, that would be. Uh, that that would be you know sort of useful for them during um, during crisis situations. So um, you know, languages from all over would be best. Cool. And uh, so you keep mentioning these other groups. Uh, can you give me a few more examples of how Bowie is already currently being used? So again, right now it's it's basic. We're we're really trying to make sure people understand that it is. We're, we're considering it in a testing phase. That's one actually one of the reasons why we got so excited by coming on here is hopefully more people will be able to test to test it and give us feedback on it. Um, it is like Rebecca and I use it, you know, like when when I'm just sort of out on the street and and um, I, I I I I couch surf a lot. I hop around a lot, and so we're sort of dog fooding it a little bit to sh to to uh, share our locations. But it's not something that we want people to rely on in, you know, like I'm kidnapped mode yet. Um, yeah. And part of that's our caution. Like we just don't, we just don't feel like it's ready for that yet, but also we, we want to make sure that it is before that. Um, and then the other part is it, it's, um, um, it really depends on what the community organization or what your needs really are. So, for example, here in uh, Albuquerque, we're, we're speaking with a group called Smart Recovery, which is an addiction recovery support group. Uh, and they have a phone tree that they currently use to, you know, to, 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 get, to get help in, in a situation where, um, where, where one of them needs support from another person in, in the group. And so that, that puts a lot of pressure on the people at the very top of the phone tree because they get mm -hmm. called first all the time. And so they were interested in Bowie uh, because it would help sort of make, you know, it would, it would distribute that load a little bit, that the human load of that, of that, um, of that call for help to, to, to the entire group, sort of in a, in a many hands make light work sort of situation. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, we're sort of running out of time. Is there anything else that's sort of interesting that we didn't get to uh, in this conversation yet? Um, I mean, I, I guess uh, one of the things that I'm particularly pleased with and sort of like, um, well, because Bowie has a couple of audiences, you know, admins uh, for websites who offer the Bowie feature set um, and, and, and users, um, I, I've been particularly excited by how much um, I've been able to 
make it usable for admins with really like one click install. So for example, we have a feature that allows you to do safe calls, i.e. You, you set up an alert to be sent in the event that you're not okay later. So you sort of preset an alert and then if you don't cancel it, it gets sent out. But this relies on um, making sure that you know, cron is running and various uh, scheduling uh, things happen at particular times. WordPress WP cron isn't particularly good at that. And so we've had to do a number of things on uh, just the programmatic side to, to make sure that we don't have to include extra special instructions to, for web admins to say, you know, make sure that your cron jobs are set up like so and so on. Um, and so that, that's that been fun and part of part of the challenge, I think, to get this um, to get this as, quote, deployable as, we, as we'd like. Okay, cool. Then... Um... Uh, uh, do you, do you, uh, what's, what's your long goal here? Is this always going to be a labor of love for you guys? Um, are you asking how we're supporting this? Cause, cause yes, basically yeah. this is, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is, um, this is a free software project, not a product of any kind. Um, and uh -huh. it's, it's, it's really for, you know, community freedom. Okay, cool. Because uh, I'm trying to think of the exit strategy for you, which it doesn't sound like there is one. So, <laughs> no, this is a long term. Yeah, you know, this is a this is this is this is a struggle long term. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Guillermo, you got anything else? Uh, well, I was thinking of maybe uh, uh, maybe do you guys have any future features that you're like really looking forward to? Like maybe let's say SMS support, or uh, I guess we already touched on uh, like uh, different uh, uh, social media connections, like Twitter, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. do you have something in mind that you you know you're really excited for? Uh, the most recent thing that I'm really excited about is uh, video conferencing out of the box because um, we've been using the Jitsi Meet uh, service, uh, and they have an external API that lets us um, have, in addition to like you know the, a, a chat channel and a map, um, the Jitsi Meet service offers video conferencing uh, over WebRTC to to all the responders in the room um, and, and live streaming so that you can sort of record a situation and then share media later on. Um, so we've just put that in and that's kind of exciting. Um, and and I'd like to see that get a little slicker. Right now it's it's you know it's still a crude integration. And I'm guessing you're not uh, planning on ever porting this to Perl, right? <laughs> I mean I personally probably will not um, uh, will not have the chops to do that, um, but I would love to see more. You know, this is really just an idea at, at, in in some ways. And so, if if someone would like to see this not run on WordPress, um, please grab the code. I mean, free software is free for a reason. I, I, well, you you touched on uh, you guys are you know holding this is a basically a, a uh, open source project. Doug. So so are you guys funding this yourselves or? Uh, are you getting donations, or how 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 does that work? Yes, um, we are asking for donations. Um, that sort of, I I sort of live my life off writing free software and getting uh, donations for that. I've been uh, happily unemployed since about two thousand and ten, I want to say, and I've been writing little free software utilities since then. Uh, and donations make up one hundred percent of my income, so this is just another one of those projects for me. Um, donations go to in, some, in part to me and in part to other people who are working on the project. Um, you can find the donation page on the betterangels.github.io link. Uh, are you guys planning <laughs> on, on opening a 501 later on? or Because th this would probably fit in very well, especially with the uh, uh, whole security aspect and you know keeping people safe if they've gone through any trauma. Yeah, I, I am not myself because I, I sort of quit because I have trouble dealing with, uh, ironically, organizations. Um, but that's something that I think Rebecca and a couple of the community groups that she's working with is talking about. Uh, so uh, maybe we missed something? I, I'm not really sure. Uh, uh, anything you guys want to uh, point out before we uh, cl you know, close down the uh, show? Um, I think just to say again that, you know, we're really excited about working with other people who find this to be an exciting idea. Um, you know, I think May May would probably tell you, although I think that he's being a little bit humble, that the technology isn't quote that interesting, um, but that the idea the idea is really interesting, and um, and we really want to collaborate with people who would like to think through it with us and um, who'd like to you know who'd like to just kind of dig in and and work on on improving whatever skills that they are interested in working on and learning whatever they want to learn um, in terms of technical capacity or non-technical capacity on in kind of like a real world project working on an issue that they care about. So yeah, if you know any, anybody who's listening to this who's like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea, um, we would love it if you'd check out 
the GitHub, take a look at the code, take a look at the website, look at our contributors page and just drop us a line. That would be so awesome. Hey, you guys, this has been a real worthwhile conversation um, uh, because this is definitely, you're, you're, you're using open source software in, in a way that manages to solve a problem, a, r a real, real, real world problem. So I want to thank both of you for coming on the show today and talking about that. And hopefully we stirred up some interest here for you. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Thanks Herbal. so much for having us Thank on. Herbal. Very good, very good. That was Meme and Rebecca talking to us about Bowie. Uh, and uh, what do you think, Guillermo? Uh, well, you know, I really like these type of projects. Uh, you probably won't take me seriously with this guy here. There, there we go. Okay. Uh, I really like these type of projects. You know, they they especially projects that do help out. It's not you know just a uh, another mail client or whatever. Uh, which I like mail clients, by the way. I'm not, <laughs> although <laughs> you'll say uh, personally. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it's not just another mail client. It's not just another uh, a Twitter client or whatever. This is something that could actually uh, help out people. And I'm sure it's probably already helped out a lot of people, especially yeah. since they are working with groups. Indeed, indeed. Okay, great. And, yeah, I was going to just chime up with about that same thing. So there you go. You, you said it so well for me. I don't mm -hmm. even have to follow up to that answer. Um, so, again, if you're interested in a project like this, now you know where to go to so find out more about Bowie. So uh, speaking of upcoming guests, we have a few more still on the schedule. Uh, next week is Simply, which is... Um, not so much about the project, it's a simple API for making PDFs out of templates, but uh, the guy who's coordinating the project has a lot to say about how to run an open source project. So that's really where we're using this project as an excuse to get together and talk about other things. So that's pretty fun. The following week, we have a surprise guest, and this is because I haven't scheduled it yet, so hopefully I can get that in before two weeks from now. Uh, we are going to be at OSCON, or I'm at least going to be at OSCON in Austin, Austin OSCON, right, uh, which we talked about a few weeks ago, and I'm sure we'll find something live to do there, but uh, I don't know what it is yet either, so we've got two surprises in a row. Boy, you got to stay tuned, right? Or you're going to miss it. Uh, and then uh, Best Practices Badge, uh, which is demonstrating that you're following best practices. You can put it uh, a little web badge to say, we are following best practices, and here's how you can do that too. And then we just added to the schedule, since the last time I read the schedule, Varnish Cache. Many of you are probably using this if you have uh, high-performance websites, but really, really big people use it. Basically, it's a reverse proxy and cache. Uh, I know at least three or four of my previous clients all, all use that. Uh, they describe themselves as a web ex application accelerator. It's also known as a cache. Caching HTTP reverse proxy. So there's going to be a lot of technical stuff in that show. We have more people on the schedule, or pretty close to being on the schedule. If you go to the big spreadsheet, twit.tv slash floss, you can find out uh, what we have in schedule, on schedule, for scheduling. Uh, we're still filling Q2. I got about five more slots to go with that. We do have a live stream. We took a few questions from there this time. Uh, we're normally tape at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays. And so we had that today, and people were asking questions in the chat room. You can follow us on Floss Weekly on Google Plus and also add Floss weekly uh, uh automatically uh, bridges over to twitter there you can follow me at, at merlin but mostly i source my material on google plus that's randall l schwartz on google plus i am as i just said going to be at oscon and uh there in my capacity as a uh, host of floss weekly and then also yapsi north america which is the pearl conference the cheap pearl conference most the expensive one um i'm also going to be there in my press capacity <coughs> excuse me and uh, I, although the last couple of weeks I announced I was going to be at Fisla in uh, Porto Alegre, Brazil, I have since decided against it with the outbreak of Zika coming around. And I don't want to be even indirectly responsible for going down to Brazil, bringing the, the disease back. So I, I'm just canceling this year. So sorry for everybody that wanted to see me at Fisley, but I'm not going to do that this year. I'm going to wait for things to clear up a little bit. And, and then uh, uh, DragonCon up in September, which is uh, my big, uh, sort of my indulgence conference where I'm on the EFF track there. Uh, but it's mostly about science fiction fantasy. And there's like 40 or 50,000 crazy people. They all get dressed up and, and do cosplay and stuff like that. Well, they don't all. I, I, I never have. So uh, anyway, so that's uh, coming up in September. Uh, Guillermo, Anything you want to plug today? Uh, well, I guess people can just follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's at G A M A R E L. Uh, I'll also be on uh, on BitCon. Uh, I think it's in a, about a month or two. And uh, after that, I think it's my usual um, a Comic Con. Uh, it's like that's probably it, though. Uh, yeah, okay. At least for the uh, events that I can think of off the uh, top of my head. Great, great, cool. And thanks for stepping in at the last minute to uh, help me out with this South of the Border show. And uh, <laughs> as always, your insight is useful and handy. And uh, um, maybe, maybe we'll actually get together this week. Well, like I keep saying we're going to, and then we never do. So, <laughs> But I'm actually, I'm here all the way through um, uh, through Sunday. So uh, uh, It'll make it easier. We can, we, we can schedule yeah. something out. 
Indeed, indeed. Well, once again, thank you, Guillermo, and thank you as the audience for paying attention to this, and we'll see you all again next week on Floss Weekly.